Hi everyone and welcome to the Friday, January 14th installment of the Silicon Insider, the only uncensored look at life and business in the Valley. My name is Mike Malone and I'm here with special contributor Scott Budman of NBC Bay Area. Our producer is Jordan Henderson, our East Coast correspondent is Bob Grove, and our host, as always, is the Silicon Valley Business Journal. Okay, well, uh, free from the Holmes trail, we can talk about other topics now. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> Hello, Mike. Uh, you sent me something last night that, yeah, I, I agree, I think it's a very, very interesting story, which is Glassdoor came out with its annual Best Places to Work list. And I guess it's a hundred companies, I believe. Right. Yeah. Uh, as usual, though, it kind of surprises me more and more. Tech still dominated best places to work. It surprises me too a little bit because tech is sort of the known commodity at this point. Yeah. You know, you know you're going to get some good benefits. You know you're going to get a good salary, especially if you have certain skills. Right. Um, but. Boy, there's been such a backlash of tech, what Kara Swisher, you know, famously called the tech lash. Yeah. And you'd think that other companies in the non-tech world... Would I would think some little yeah. family-run, friendly company in the Midwest. Well, or why not finance? I mean, finance had its own backlash. True. Uh, you know, all these industries, uh, hotels, you know, hospitality, restaurants, they can step up and say, we can do some of these benefits. Uh, and we can be scandal free where you won't have to go home for Thanksgiving and explain to your parents, okay, well, I was kind of responsible for a riot on the Capitol or something like yeah. that. You know, in the last few years, it's been text turn in the barrel. Right. That, you know, all the stories about everybody leaving and, you know, getting out of the Bay Area and leaving their companies because they're, you know, they don't agree with the company or this and that. And all of a sudden, you look at the list. Number one, I found incredibly interesting. Well, and this actually, so this sort of makes sense. You want to say what number one is? You want me to? All right, so it's NVIDIA. NVIDIA. And I know these guys really well. For years, I've done a lot of stories. I have a lot of friends there. They are what maybe 15 years ago Applied Materials was. Yeah, you know how if you lived in the Valley or anywhere, you just yeah. knew several people from Applied Materials? Right. Either that had come and gone, that had cashed in a lot of stock and you know moved away to Tahoe or whatever. That's now NVIDIA. Not only are they making money hand over fist and the stock value has been incredible, but they're known for their culture. You know, this is a chip maker, yeah. but it does other things. And, you know, they're sort of in the specialty so world. So they've had like a hat trick. They, yeah. They're the number one chip company around now. They're one of the richest companies in Silicon Valley, and they're the best place to work in America. Brand new headquarters in Santa Clara, uh, a little removed from the rat race. Yep. And they're not in the headlines, other than when they do the best stock performers of <laughs> yeah, the year, yeah. but they're not in the headlines um, for the regular news or even the tabloid news. They make headlines in the gaming space. Yes. They make headlines in the how revenue is rolling in and in all the places you want And to I be. don't see their executives, despite all of their new success and power, they're not in the headlines. No, their CEO, Jensen Wong, I'll tell you a little bit about him, He's, and I'll, I'll, what an example, but he's the Steph Curry of CEOs. Not only is he a fantastic performer and everybody loves him, he's a good guy. Where does he come out of? He's been there forever. He started the company many, many decades ago and he's stuck. And so, and I don't mean he's stuck like he can't move anywhere. He has stuck in place on purpose and he has transformed this culture. This is a company that for many years decided, let's not do a Christmas party. Let's build a school instead. They take all their resources and they do something good and it's a nice little thing. And meanwhile, they're so positioned for the smartphone, yeah, car, they place, AI, they place even Bitcoin. Perfectly. Right, and they're just ripping it up and they're what every other semiconductor company wishes they could be. So should we be celebrating this guy more? I mean, it, you know, it sounds like he, he gets the Hewlett Packard Spirit Award. You yeah, know. well, I, you know, you see him out and about, and granted, he's the guy that pulls up in the McLaren. He loves his cars. Oh, okay. I happen to know this. But once he gets out of that car, yeah, you know, you'll see him having a cup of coffee, hanging out, and he's just a great guy, family guy. And it's, it's really interesting to see how uh, non-celebrity he is in an era where, you know, you still have the Bezos and the Musk and, and all that, and even the Benioff, and they're out there saying, look at me. 
and and you know I get it all right whatever but sure. he's really rich and you just don't necessarily know it once he steps out of his car <laughs> okay well cheers to him yeah. and credit to him do you know what Glassdoor's criteria are I mean do you have to have a certain number of employees respond? We don't know their sample size. I don't know the sample size, but right, it's it's based on the people at these companies and what they say about their companies and what they say about each other and the other yes. guys and all that stuff. And so who knows? This is one metric. Yeah. Um, and, and you notice some of these companies, whether they're financial companies like Bain or, you know, super successful stock companies like NVIDIA. Um, you know, money has something to do with this, but you go down to like number five box. Yeah, well, let's go down. Okay. Nvidia, HubSpot. Right, tech, but not terribly sexy tech. Yeah, and it, it seems like that might be a company where it's harder to have a great culture. But maybe not. I mean, maybe the culture is what you do inside the office. Yes. Which is why you don't see Amazon in the top 10 or anymore. You know, Facebook used to be number one for years, mm -hmm. and I get it. Beautiful campus, lots of amenities. You're making lots of money. money. There were there's theirs was a precipitous fall this right. year. Right. Well. Yeah. Well. <laughs> culture yeah. perhaps has to do with being able to tell your loved ones and parents or whatever yeah, what I you can, do for a living. Yeah. And the ultimate test is that you know at Christmas at Christmas or Thanksgiving, <laughs> you don't want to talk about your job anymore. Or the big one is I remember this was with Microsoft when it was the you know, the heart of darkness, uh, you didn't want to talk to anybody about where you work. You kind of, Sato Voce said, oh, I kind of work with, you know, Microsoft. Uh. <laughs> right. And, you know, I, I noticed some of these uh, things that, uh, I mean, if you want to jump ahead, like one of the companies that's brand new. So NVIDIA, HubSpot, oh, okay. Bain yeah. & Company, EXP Realty, I know nothing about them. Do you? No. Okay. Box, number five. Silicon Valley Tech Company, software, cloud. Not, you know, terribly successful. They're public. Uh, they do all right. Yeah. But I happen to have covered this company from the very beginning. Um, again, a CEO who's stuck with it. A nice guy. They have a fun headquarters. Yeah. Uh, and I think people just like being there. And you can tell people, hey, cloud storage. It's fun. It keeps your stuff safe. There's no scandal. So in other words, it's 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 kind of number one if you include it the fact that it's not that successful. <laughs> I mean, it well, seems I, to me that if you're working for a successful company and they're throwing stock options at you, and you're looking at the, you know, the the sale price of a share, and you're getting rich, you know, that covers a lot of other, you know, perhaps weaknesses in corporate culture. Right. I mean, we'll get to a couple where I have questions like, what does this cover? Because yeah, some of these are companies you'd think you'd be running away from. Can companies game this? I have no idea. I mean, I, they, I don't know. The word come out from the evil CEO, you're going to say we're the best company to work for. I don't think or so. Or we'll fire your ass. I mean, they can't trace that, and that would be the kind of thing that wouldn't be a good culture to work for. Oh, absolutely not. Okay, number six, Boston Consulting Group. Number seven, and this they're the, besides NVIDIA, they're the biggest on the list from the Valley, Google. Well, Google is still... Um, what Facebook had as far as all the amenities and all the big things yes. and okay Google has had some backlash but apparently not enough to where maybe that test that you just talked about you can still say I work at Google and people will say hey cool hey, cool yeah, yeah. Uh, I would have thought that given all the internal political disagreements that those employees would be not happy maybe or maybe they think they're at least being listened to one yeah, thing that has impressed true. me about google is that people speak out yeah they let you protest out front to an extent yeah they if, if that becomes more of an issue and more people are let go who protest yeah that could get ugly for them uh that was their number seven number eight veterans united home loans know nothing about them number nine which i always mispronounce lululemon I think you got that right. Good. <laughs> uh, interesting. They're not really here. No, they're not. But the Bay Area loves its Lululemon stretch pants and stuff. Oh like yeah, that. oh Yoga's yeah, big. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, number ten, another big company, Salesforce. Yeah, you know, Salesforce is another big successful company. You it know, built a beautiful people, headquarters. I know several people that work for them who were kind of freelancers before, and they're real happy. You know, you look at some of the companies that are in the software space, and Adobe is coming up, and, you know, I'd even throw Google in there. They're big companies. They're well-run. You know, the CEO is respected, 
And you know, with Salesforce, again, the headlines you make are of a more positive nature than, yeah. say, the Facebook headlines. It just works out that way. And you show up to work in this gigantic tower, and and, I you, think, know, and you know the boss is doing good for the city. Right, and I think you have a feeling that your company is going to be around for a while, and that yeah. means something in a economy that you Job know. Job security. Yeah, sure. Uh, now the next one I would have thought would be higher, as you said, hospitality, Royal Caribbean group. See, I thought I'm going to disagree. I think it would be lower. Don't they do cruises? Yeah. I mean, who wants to work for a cruise line right now? Well, not yeah, but that's true. But so they that's didn't fire everybody. I guess not, but a cruise? <laughs> maybe it's maybe its culture is really good, despite the fact that all the headlines cruise companies make and have made in the past couple of years have yes. been scary COVID headlines. Right. Okay. Number twelve, uh, NASA Jet Propulsion Lab. Okay, you're working at JPL and you're at Caltech. It seemed like that was kind of a doesn't seem like a big enough operation to be listed here. But... I'm impressed. That would be the number one job for me on oh, any of these. Of course, we'd all like. <laughs> If I was smart enough. Yeah. So that's a culture of smart people, and apparently you they just get to well. sit in that control room and cheer whenever something lands <laughs> on Mars. I mean, it seems like a really good life. You're in Pasadena too. Right. Uh, okay, five nine. What Tech. is five nine? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Twilio. Tech again. Tech again. Uh, this is another one that seems awful small. You know, sampling. Johns Hopkins University Applied Research Lab. So, I don't like, know, maybe they just get together and they really vote on this well. And Johns Hopkins, again, it's I mean, sort of like, like 50, NASA. 50 PhDs in a room somewhere? Well, and again, if it's Christmas and people are like, hey, where are you working these days? You want to drop Johns Hopkins? Not bad. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> uh, next, Adobe. Perennial. The sleeper company. Yeah, it's always there because everybody loves Adobe. And again, yeah. it's one of those companies, if you live here long enough, you will know an Adobe person. In my case, yeah. you will have Adobe people move out of your neighborhood. <laughs> because they need to buy a bigger house. Because they they're just yeah. too rich. Yeah. Called in rich. Okay. Uh, Akamai. Again, software, sure. Yep. Delta Airlines, an airline company. That's kind of interesting. Surprise. Yeah, but maybe their culture is good in house. You never know. And there's two uh, in the top thirty. Uh, the other one's Southwest. Uh, okay, another Sunnyvale now. LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a neighbor who is in charge of quality of life. At LinkedIn, I mean, that's what she does. She's a regular listener to this. We've mentioned her name before, but that's quite quite a credit to her. I think it is because when a company like LinkedIn, that was known for being cool, gets yeah. bought by a gargantuan conglomerate like Microsoft, what often suffers the culture? Sure. You know, maybe you make more money, your job is more secure, whatever. But you're working now for Microsoft. Right. Here's, your, here's your new set of rules. Right. Yeah. So the fact that LinkedIn stays in the top 20, I think, is a credit to LinkedIn specifically saying, let's let's look internally and make sure we keep people feeling like they work for LinkedIn. You know, I resisted being on LinkedIn for years because it was just a PR people would just inundate me. But you know, that's a healthy site. I mean, I go in there and I go, wow. This, this, this thing's actually really has a lot of vitality to it, a lot of activity. It still seems to be, when we do job search stories, uh, the thing that pops up first. Yeah. That people like to be on, yeah. Uh, Rivian. I mean, brand new. It's a sexy thing. It's yeah. the electric. Good for them. Now, here's a company that fallen, kind of fallen off the radar. I mean, it used to be considered this wonderful place to work, and I remember being up there, and the dogs were running mm -hmm. around, the kids and all that. Uh, Santa Rosa. Autodesk. Right? Yeah. You know, I mean, once they started losing, you know, Carol Bartz. Select Carol Bartz. I mean, right. Carol Bartz is one of the great figures of the Valley right. history, one of the great characters. And once she left, nobody seemed to cover Autodesk anymore. But I guess that, that personality, that Marin personality and culture stayed. Yeah, they're a little removed from the Valley and they had the celebrity CEO and, and the wonderful Carol Bartz. And, uh, and yet, again, software, it's not going anywhere. They're they're pretty secure and they do a good job. For years, I I, I asked people of all the CEOs in the valley, who would you like to have a drink with, for fun, sure. not for business. Carol Bartz. A great interview. A great interview. Who had no problem swearing. And this is Autodesk salty to Yahoo. A, salty as a sailor. Absolutely, absolutely. You had to <laughs> beep out some words, and that was always fun. Uh, number twenty-two, MathWorks. Number twenty-three, ServiceNow. Tech. Uh, Twenty-four. Mountain America Credit Union. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Uh, who knows? <laughs> now, here's what I would expect to be higher. 
Number 25, Milwaukee Tool. You expected them to be higher. <laughs> you know, an old-fashioned, you know, mid-country, you know, Rust Belt, you know, solid company produces really good products. Uh, 25. Okay, number 26, The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Big tech play. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. But good for them, again. Well, a big tech play in terms of the, their their <laughs> membership has a sizable you know, representation of tech, but... Well, and this is people who work there. Work and, at, yeah, work yeah, in So Salt they Lake do City. a good job in the culture, and that's, again, what tells you, um, <laughs> much like a company that got bought by Microsoft, it's a church. It has a larger purpose. Yeah. And yes. yet, if you work there, the culture is good. good only, chur- only church on the list that I saw. True. True. Uh, number 27, DocuSign. Tech again. There's one of those little things in this in our world that we take for granted. Right. Uh, Microsoft. Microsoft made it back. I mean, the, the, the resurrection of Microsoft has been a miracle. They'll teach that in business schools. And uh, it's beat out so it's a lot of big companies that uh, once beat it. Uh, number 29, Intuitive Surgical. Number 30, Southwest Airlines. Then I went down the list for interesting other companies uh, on the list. Number 32, Trader Joe's. Number 39, In-N-Out Burger. But not Chick-fil-A. I didn't see Chick-fil-A on there, but in A little Burger. politically uh, problematic, but not In-N-Out Burger. Yeah, People not love In-N-Out, In-N-Out Burger. Burger. <laughs> you know, once you, once you discover that you can order well-done fries so you don't get those, <laughs> you don't get those noodles, all of a sudden, in and out becomes the perfect hamburger place. Well, and again, you bring that up at the Christmas dinner and everyone comes up with their whatever secret and you're oh, like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. us. The, we the, the, the secret list, yeah. <laughs> okay, number 44 is Silicon Valley Bank. Local, right. Yep. Uh, now, <clears throat> this is interesting. Here are three companies, I, the last three I, I pulled out. Number 47, Meta. Facebook Meta, right. Facebook big, is, big drop. Facebook is, but that's got to be the embarrassment factor because I... I'm not struck that Facebook has become a worse place to work internally, but it's not something you want to talk about being a part of anymore. But, and I just read this book by Shira Frankel, internally there is some derision and concern and tension because of what you just said. And that bubbles up to why are we doing this, why are we not doing this, why are we not protecting users from this? Why are we still willingly allowing these people on the site? Yeah, and and that's the nervous. That's that's the chilly Thanksgiving dinner where you say, "Oh, I work for Facebook," and they say, "Why are you wrecking my teenage daughter's life?" Right. I mean, I know people who work for Facebook and who have left Facebook, yeah. and there were some tough times for them upstairs thinking yeah. about what are we doing? Are we doing the wrong thing? Which you don't really think about if you're making you know, database software yeah. or something like that necessarily, and, and or, you know, chips for smartphones. But Facebook slash Meta has got that reputation. Now, here's a company that used to be known as being fun, and obviously your customer base is fun. Uh, number 55, eBay. It's just so... I think, I think yeah. you, this is the point where eBay has been around so long, and it hasn't had a really spectacular growth in recent years, that it becomes a place that, when you say you work for eBay now in Silicon Valley, everybody looks at you going, why aren't you at a more interesting company or a more dynamic company, or why aren't you more ambitious? I guess so, but it's interesting that that eBay is this far down because eBay is a commodity. Yeah. But people still like it. I mean, Adobe is a commodity. It's always way up on the list. Right. So maybe eBay needs to do something. I know they've, they've tweaked their headquarters, and it's a little bit of a nicer, sunnier place to work, you know, especially right. since splitting off from PayPal. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a little surprised it's that low just because eBay employees seem to be happy. But yeah. you're right. It's a commodity company. It's not exciting to, to tell your no. friends about. And this is the big surprise to me, number yeah. 56, Apple. That's low for me. That's low for Apple. Why do you think that is? I mean, it's tripled in size. We haven't even mentioned this, but it crossed $3 trillion. It's the biggest company in the history of the world. You know, that may it has be... has cool products. It's got great products and, every, you know, right. People, people love it to an extent. I wonder if it's just that big. And people look at the spaceship and they think there is a big, giant, sterile place to work. Yeah. And maybe yeah. that's a little bit different than Box, where people are doing their work in hammocks. Um, yeah. I, I just wonder if when you get that big, maybe 
you just can't help but get that corporate. And that's why we go back to LinkedIn, bought by the giant corporation of Microsoft, but they still manage to keep their, their feeling, and so they're high up on the list. Yeah, but drive by, drive by LinkedIn, it's got big buildings, but they're kind of, they have multiple ones. You go by Apple, you know this, I remember, let's go back to HP again as the, you know, as the gold standard. Every time they got over, I think it was 5,000 employees, they built a new division and it was designed to fit into the landscape. And you still see those buildings, you go, oh, they're really nice. Apple, you know, that, that the mothership is an intimidating structure. Yeah, and it's, it's the epitome, obviously, for many reasons of big tech. Yes. And right now, big tech is what is being subpoenaed by the January 6th commission. Yeah. Well, and and it kind of looks like a, the old panopticon idea of a prison where you could stand in the center and, and, and keep track of every prisoner around you. There is no place to hide. If Dave Eggers is writing a book loosely yeah. based on your company, yeah. maybe you're going to be down a little bit on the glass door yeah, list. That, yeah, that's true. Uh, okay, well, that's it. You know, but a good list. Interesting. And yeah. Eye opening. I'm glad you brought that up. Okay. Uh, the home sense. I hate to, you know, you, I know you, you, you visibly shiver when I talk no, about no, the no. home <laughs> trial, but. I still have Rotary Club dates to talk about <laughs> homes, and I've got podcasts that want to talk about homes. It's still a talker. Uh, the sentencing date. Yeah. So the sentencing date is, is a bit of a surprise, at least to those of us who don't know much about court like myself. Yeah. Late September, which is nine months away. Why wait that long? Trial watchers say it sometimes works that way. It gives time to maybe cut a deal. The Sunny Balwani trial is coming up in March. You know, she may be somehow a specter hanging over that. There may be information from her. So I guess there are a few reasons. She'll but it's, get called, won't she, as a witness? I don't know. I mean, the reason they split the two trials up is so they would not be in the courtroom at the same time. Yeah. So if she takes the stand in the Balwani trial, woof, that would be something. <laughs> oh, you're back at the courthouse. <laughs> yeah, you're back at the courthouse. <laughs> okay, yeah, just late September just surprised me. It does seem late, or it does seem like a, a big gap of time. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's almost, it's even like a few weeks past the one-year anniversary yeah, of when I we mean, started. In our go-go our go -go culture here in the Valley, the idea of letting something cool and time for negotiation and all that is like anathema to us right you know we want we wanted the results the next day we wanted her brought back in and the judge to say you know eight thousand hours of community service or three years in jail or something well this was when the tech world met the legal world and yeah. those of us who used to cover the tech world were like wait what do you mean we don't have anything to do for the next five days or the next nine months yeah it's a surprise <laughs> well it's probably Probably good for your blood pressure. <laughs> Slow things down. <laughs> exactly. Okay, here's a headline from 1990s, but written backwards. Apple lost another top chip engineer, this time to Microsoft. You remember when Apple was making fun of Microsoft? That, you know, uh, and now Microsoft is stealing talent from Apple. Yeah, I mean, Apple loses a lot of talent because it's so big and successful to, like, startups. Right. But, um, again, the turnaround that Microsoft has had is, is legendary. But you know what? You don't have to go too far to where Microsoft was saving Apple's bacon. Remember that oh, yeah. famous thing with Jobs and, you know, Gates and the thing up above on the screen? Oh, yeah. I remember seeing that and just being shocked. Yeah, and it was a cover of Business Week, I think. And yeah. yeah. Um, but... Years later, Apple was number one and Microsoft was getting its teeth kicked in. Yep. Then Satya Nadella comes in, and, and it's not like they've switched places. Apple is still no, number Apple's, one. That was a $3 trillion company. Right, so to say, hey, the number one company lost a chip engineer to the number two size <laughs> company, it's, eh, you know. Now, but, you know, in my, my one of my rules about covering this town is when you see top talent leaving a company, uh, something's going wrong. You know, and, and you can say, yeah, well, he got offered more money, he got offered more position. But if you're in a really, really hot company, you stick around because you you see the you see the the good side out there, the good news coming, the big money, stock options, and all that. Is Apple suffering? One of its problems, besides this number fifty-seven, right? Is uh, or whatever it was, is is Apple not being able to distribute? its success to its employees? I don't know about that. I mean, that. companies I, get to the size they can't give away stock options anymore. 
but sometimes they create pseudo options. Well, they're sort of at this point they're RSUs because the stock is so high yeah. and so you know established. But I think this is a problem where it's just a really big company yeah. that's had a ton of success, and so people get either itchy feet or they just say it's too gigantic. I want something smaller. Now leaving for Microsoft. I was going to say Microsoft bad. isn't tiny. No. And 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 Seattle is not as attractive a place to go to. I, I know. Uh, well, but you don't have to go to Seattle to work for Microsoft. There's a giant, giant well, Microsoft in, in Mountain View. In Mountain View, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but you know, I a lot of a lot of the, at his level probably would go to Seattle. Perhaps so. so. You know, I, I know a woman here. She was working for a, a big six accounting firm, and went up there and lived in downtown Seattle with two young daughters for about a month and a half. And got out of there. I mean, Seattle's not a not a the place it was. Is that going to hurt Microsoft in the long run? I mean, they're out there on the outskirts. You know, they're in Redmond, but still, is is Seattle used to be part of the recruiting draw? Look, Microsoft is still top thirty in the Glassdoor well, index, so they're true. doing something right. But that's again, true. Microsoft's problem, I think, is similar to Apple's problem. It's just so big, yeah. you're not going to change the world in big chunks. You're going to yeah. do it in little incremental chunks. And for some, that's fine. Others say, no, I need to do the next big thing. And right. when you can't pivot that much because you're on this gargantuan aircraft carrier, yeah. you know, you go to the boxes of the world or the hub spots or whatever. But um, Well, I'm going to be watching because there are certain things like that and no matter what they say, it's like, oh, I'm retiring to spend more time with my family. Perhaps that's true, but there's another reason in there. And if you see enough of this happening at Apple, right? You know, my role is you short the stock, even though I can't buy stock. You <laughs> short the stock. Uh, I just think that's what happens when you get to the three trillion dollar yeah. level. You know, people are just not quite as excited anymore because you've reached the pinnacle. Well, remember we talked about this at the last uh, you know round of product introductions. Apple has not produced a major new product since Steve Jobs. You know, there's there's no new earth-shaking hundred billion dollar market that they're that they're prospecting out there. They're they're perfecting what they have, and that's a that's a great cash cow generator, but it's not necessarily a great growth generation and and, and make you play and stay in the game at the top for a few And that's years. the problem with a big successful company, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, uh, oh my! Did you read the Real Wall Street Journal front page yesterday? Yeah, I think Inflation this is a big story. Inflation the highest since 1982, and people are even questioning that—that that, uh, the consumer price index went up over nine percent. I mean, no matter how well you're doing, you're losing money. If you get a raise, you're still losing money. Well, and that's what happens. We gave out a lot of stimulus money. Uh, businesses and good for them paying a higher wage for yep. workers but the price of goods responding to that largely has now surpassed those raises and yeah. that's how we get into inflation our money buys less now that's concerning right because yes. even though we're making a little more money you're getting that well, stimulus I'm glad check. I'm not buying it. I heard from Bob Grove back east fuel oil costs right unbelievable especially of a cold winter he's talking about putting in a wood stove in, in Massachusetts, because he's paying triple what he did, uh, you know, a couple of years ago for well, fuel. Across the country, fuel prices higher, used car prices are higher. You can't win if you're buying things right, right now because the prices are so high. That's concerning. What would be really bad is what's next, maybe stagflation. Remember that? Yeah, the that's wage, the where wage, the wage, the wage uh, price spiral. Right. So not a good economy, but still costs go up, and we may be facing that next. But then again. Look why we're in an inflationary period. We pumped a lot of money into the economy. Well, if we can, with it, but the government still is printing money with abandon. Right. And we're looking at gigantic budgets. I mean, I remember when Reagan got us out of the last one, and it had never been done before. I mean, it looked like it was just going to keep spiraling down forever. And the way he did it was he pulled the string on a recession. Right. You know, and we're getting to the point that that may be the only way out of this death spiral. Well, they raised interest rates, right, in the early 80s? Yeah. David Stockman, I believe, was the name, the right. financial guy. Sure. They raised interest rates, caused a recession, and 
boy, that was not a great solution. It was but, not fun. But, <laughs> but it yeah, got, it, it set us on the path then for, you know, twelve years of continuous growth. Right. Right. But man, that hurt because you were come you were paying twenty percent interest on your mortgage. Right. You know, and then the recession hits, so you got the double whammy, and so it's it's like it's like really nasty chemo to deal with a serious illness and uh, we don't want to get to that point that that's just a nightmare right i mean we're still a couple stages away from that but right yeah. we're just one step away from stagflation if the economy slows and prices still go up we're having and supply chain issues because of covid which means there's scarcity which also raises prices in the right. stores and on your car and lots the holiday and your shopping season down almost two percent right. when was the last time you heard that Right, I think people stayed away from the stores to a certain extent. They even shopped less online than yeah. before. And uh, that's concerning, but I think people saw what was on the horizon. Because remember, it, it wasn't just in the last couple of weeks, it was pre-Christmas that we started to see prices going up. And I think people said, let's rein in our spending a little bit because things are expensive, no matter how high our wages are or how much the stimulus check in check is, it's just expensive out there like we haven't seen in a long time. Uh, well, let's... Man, let's hope. Uh, anyway, venture capitalists are having fun. Yeah, the money's still flowing there just fine. Yeah, they invested more money than ever in startups last year. They were literally investing. They invested, uh, well, let's see, uh, some gigantic amount of, oh, $328.8 billion into U.S. startups uh, via Zoom calls. Right. You know, we're not going into you know go up to Sand Hill. You don't have to go to Sand Hill anymore. And, <laughs> right. You know, to try to pitch the VCs, you're sitting in Norwich, Connecticut, on Zoom in your in your den with your pajama bottoms on, you know, pitching to the VCs, and they gave out that much money. That's incredible. What surprised me was they still gave money to Chinese startups. It seems to me that's a high risk investment right now. But it is paying off for some of these VCs, yeah. and so 61. yeah, sixty-one point eight billion. It's a lot of money. But boy, China could pull the string on those things in a heartbeat. I know that's risky money, but yeah, they're still investing. While only thirty-nine point eight billion into UK startups. UK basically shut down them. Uh, I mean, I wonder if you're starting to see, you know, what people had feared with Brexit, which is it's not the first choice anymore when it comes yeah. to that part of Europe. Um, and I, I don't know, maybe Ireland is going to be the next big startup place. Who knows? Again. Yeah, <laughs> I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, so, and well, I guess one of the reasons you put all that money is because 133 startups in San Francisco Bay Area were unicorns last year. A valuation of over $1 billion. I remember when it was like, pop the champagne, we have a unicorn. 133 in San Francisco. Isn't that the town that everybody's leaving right now? that uh, nobody's starting companies or anything else. That's an amazing contribution to the U.S. economy. And perhaps the most celebrated CEO of the last decade is likely on her way to prison. So yes. Take that, VCs. <laughs> you lost a lot of money in Theranos. Yeah. Oh, that's harsh. Uh, okay. And uh, finally, the kicker. You said this to me. Smog, or Smod, the sweet meteor of death. Uh, there's an asteroid the size of the Golden Gate Bridge is heading our way. That's actually a planetary extinction event, isn't it, if it's that big? Yeah, but it's not going to hit It's us. not going to hit. But boy, is it kind of close to that don't you look know, up movie. <laughs> you know, you look, at, you look at all the screw-ups in, in modern science, and you just hope that they do these calculations right. Right, exactly. You hope it's not heading exactly our way. But I, I, I can't, SMOD came to mind, because remember, 19, 2012 election, Mitt Romney was the, was the Republican nominee for president, and the conservatives all said, I'll support the end of the world before I'll support Mitt Romney. And they called it the sweet meteor of death. And I thought, well, that's kind of appropriate for, you know, coming off of 2020 and 2021, heading into 2022. <laughs> I think a lot of us might vote for the, for the sweet meteor of death. Well, it's due to pass us apparently on the 18th. So if you're listening to this on the 19th or 20th, yeah, good, take a breath of relief. Yeah, we're still here. <laughs> uh, 
the ones that scare me the most are the ones that are inside the moon's orbit. Right. Yeah, that's that's real close. That that's that's not close. That's not even a haircut. That's a shave. Well, so, maybe if you're working up at NASA in the top 15 <laughs> yeah, in Yeah, propulsion at JPL. It's be an even cooler job. <laughs> More important job. Uh, okay, that's it for now, folks. You can find us on the Silicon Valley Business Journal homepage as well as on Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. And you can also find us on LinkedIn. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.